Hello friends, welcome to Smart Catalyst. Today we will be seeing the current affairs of 13 February 2019. The articles we will be seeing for prelims are these five. First one talks about the state of the economy. It talks about the fall in retail inflation. Second article talks about the child marriages in many parts of the country. And the third article is about the CAG report which shows that the central government has exceeded the approved expenditure by multifold. Fourth article is about the NASA study on India and China's greening effort. And the final one talks about Bharat 22, India's exchange traded fund. The first article we'll be seeing is the state of the economy. This article talks about the fall in retail prices and the now the retail inflation is 19 months low. So to begin with this article, we'll start with the concept of inflation. So what is inflation? Inflation is basically persistent and appreciable rise in the general price level. So the in rise of the prices must be persistent. So persistent here means that a general upward trend of prices for a period of time and appreciable means an increase in the price level beyond 3 percentage. This is textbook definition of inflation. And this inflation can be caused due to many reasons. Broadly, the reasons is demand pull inflation due to increase in demand inflation can be caused. And cost push inflation due to increase in the cost of production of goods, the inflation can be caused. And it is very important to measure inflation in order to uh, determine the health of any economy. And the inflation in case of India is measured by using two main indices that is WPI, Wholesale Price Index and CPI consumer price index. So the consumer price index data is released now. The consumer price index, it measures inflation from the consumer's perspective and it provides an estimation of price changes in a basket of goods and services which is representative of consumption expenditure. And this uh, data is published by CSO that the Central Statistical Office which is under Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. So according to the release the retail prices according to CPI which is released by CSO we can see the trend here last year the uh, CPI value was 4.6 which came down to about 2% now and if you consider food inflation alone as food is a volatile commodity there is separate CPI food which is called as CFPI index which is separately released by CSO if you take this index this uh, food inflation has also considerably come down to minus 2.17% which is a very positive trend. So inflation is also classified into two types which is core inflation and headline inflation. Headline inflation consists of uh, all three food, fuel as well as manufacturing sector. However, since food and fuel prices are highly volatile, the core inflation excludes food and fuel prices and it talks about only manufacturing sector. So as the data states, the inflation is now under control. And because of this, last year, the RBI's Monetary Policy Committee has also changed its stance from calibrated tightening to neutral, which means that it is the desire to go forward with the cut and it has cut the policy rate by 25% so that there is more flow of money into the economy and thus it can address the slowing global growth problem. Yet and the index is index of industrial production. This index of industrial production also is released by CSO. And this is a short term uh, composite index. It talks about the changes in volume of production of a basket of industrial products within the given period of time. This includes three main sectors, mining, manufacturing and electricity. And the trend of this IIP is also released now. So the um, IIP growth has reduced from 4.5% in April 2018 to 2.4% currently. So this infographics shows the uh, statistics of the inflation rates currently. And the uh, core inflation is broadly explained here. That is core inflation is where fuel and food prices are excluded as they are volatile. And it includes components of education, personal care, household services, health, transport and communication out of which health and education constitutes major share. The second article we'll be seeing is about child marriages in our country. This article is based on a UNICEF study saying that though legally child marriages are banned in our country and in several states the child marriages has declined but still the child marriages practice is prevalent in many states. So in India we have a separate act called as Prohibition of Child Marriage Act 2006. The Supreme Court of India gave a landmark judgment criminalizing sex with a child bride and hence Removing an exception in India's criminal jurisprudence which had that, which had until then, that is until 2007, gave a legal protection to men who raped their minor wives. So child marriage in our country is legally a crime. 
However, according to this UNICEF report, it states that child marriage is rampant in across many parts of India. So we can see this data in two types. One is state-wise. 40% of the child marriages in our country are with respect to northern states like Bihar, West Bengal and Rajasthan. Prevalence of child marriages in developed states in South India like Tamil Nadu and Kerala is only 20%. So this data shows that education and development plays a very important role in bringing down the child marriage rate. With increase in awareness and increase in proactive government investment in adolescent girls, the child marriages will definitely come down. Another way of seeing child marriages here is with respect to communities, it is stated that and this child marriages is high among pockets of tribal communities and also among particular caste including scheduled caste. So the child marriages is more prevalent in lower caste when compared to higher caste which means that more developmental efforts need to be concentrated in this area. Uh, apart from this the report titled fact sheet the child marriages declined from 47% to 27% in the past one decade that is 2005 to 2015. This trend is not just visible in India but is a worldwide trend and there is also a shift in the child marriages trend from South Asia where more child marriages are prevalent now to Sub-Saharan Africa. This is because of the slower rate of progress and the growing population in Sub-Saharan Africa when compared to Asia. This fact sheet calls for serious efforts in the domain of girl education via schemes like Beti Padao, Girl Child's Health as most of the girl childs below the 18 years of age in our country are anemic and also more awareness about child marriages in our country. So empowering women and girl child is the only way to stop this menace. The third article for the day is government exceeded approved expenditure by 99,000 crores according to CAC report. This article was taken from Indian Express. So article 148 of Indian constitution establishes a constitutional body called as Controller and Auditor General of India. And the main functions of Controller and Auditor General of India is to audit the Consolidated Fund of India, the Contingency Fund of India and also the receipts and expenditures of the central as well as the state government. This is the constitutional mandate of CAG. So CAG every year it submits financial audit of accounts to the union government and this uh, audit report is currently tabled by the president in the parliament's budget session. This report finds that 99,000 600 crores excess expenditure incurred by the government without actual approval for the financial year 2018. As we all know, the government makes expenditure from the Consolidated Fund of India and according to provisions of the constitution, any amount taken from the Consolidated Fund of India must have parliamentary approval. And since this expenditure is taken from the Consolidated Fund of India without any approval of the parliament, this is a basic violation of the principles of democracy according to the CAC report. Apart from this expenditure, about 1,100 crores has been spent by the finance ministry for various other heads without approval of the parliament and majority about 95,000 crore rupees collected under secondary and higher education cess is retained under consolidated fund of India without uh, properly utilizing for the purpose for which the cess is collected and in many cases grants given are also unutilized. So this CAG report is also supplemented by Public Accounts Committee's 83rd report which takes serious cases of argumentation of provision of objects under grants in aid and subsidies. The next article we'll be seeing is India-China lead global greening effort which is as per NASA satellite study. This article was taken from the paper Hindu. So recently a study was based on NASA satellite data. According to this data, as against global view that India and China, the developing countries of the world which contributes more to the global warming and the climate change, the report says that India and China account for one third of greening. The greening in case of China from forests is 42% and croplands is 32% and in case of India it's 82% from cropland. And both of these countries are global leaders in case of the greening effect. In order to address this uh, issue of climate change and global warming, India has brought in many schemes. One important scheme for that is National Mission for Green India under National Action Plan for Climate Change. This was launched in the year 2014 and it aims at protecting, restoring 
as well as enhancing the diminishing forest cover in our country. This uh, national mission of Green India, it plans to increase the tree cover to help achieve Green India. According to Forest Survey's latest state of forest report, 24% of total geographical area in our country is under forest. However, the government of India plans to increase it by 33%. And the report also notes that the reason why there is more greening in India and China is attributed to warmer, better climate in India and China and fertilization from added carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. However, it is also to be noted that the gain in the greenness around the world does not necessarily offset the loss of vegetation in tropical other tropical regions such as Brazil and Indonesia. So, serious efforts of greening need to be taken in all the parts of the globe in order to mitigate the harmful effects of the climate change. The final article for the day is about Bharat 22. The third public offer of this Bharat 22 is about to begin and we'll also see about the exchange traded fund and how it varies from stocks and mutual funds. So, this Bharat 22 is a second exchange traded fund of our in-country. First exchange traded fund being CPSC's exchange traded fund 10. So before knowing about Bharat 22, we need to know about what is exchange traded fund for the prelims exam. So exchange traded fund is nothing but an investment fund just like other options like stocks or mutual funds. So, this in exchange traded fund, in order to reduce the deviations and volatility, it is designed in such a way to keep its trading close to its net asset value. Because of this, these exchange traded funds are relatively low cost, tax efficient and they have stock like features. And the value of this exchange traded fund, it's derived from the basic asset value which it constitutes. So, in case of Bharat 22, the asset value comes from the 22 stock options which is under its roof. So, an exchange traded fund derives its value from the assets it consists of. And this exchange traded fund can be more compared to the mutual funds. However, here it derives its value only from the basket of underlying assets. So, it can be considered to be more fluid like stocks. And it is a more safer option when compared to stocks. So this Bala 22 is one such exchange traded fund and it comprises of 12 stocks including central public sector enterprises, PSU banks as well as specific undertaking of unit trust of India. In order to avoid risk, the Bala 22 is well diversified into six sectors. The six sectors are basic materials like aluminium, energy, finance, Industries, FMCG and Utilities. Here Industries, Finance as well as Utilities, they constitute the major chunk. So what is the purpose of this exchange traded fund or Bharat 22? So this uh, Bharat 22 is used by the government in order to meet its disinvestment targets. It is used by the government to raise money from the market platform so that it can meet its physical deficit targets. So this route provides a neat workaround by letting government pass small stocks in big basket. Thank you.